So, the TCU is officially dead. So, um, I'm making this video as sort of um, a remembering type of tribute vi video to the bumps and highs of the DCU. That all started in, tw in 2013 with Man of Steel. And then in just like one or two weeks ago with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So, uh, we're going to talk about this, uh, this universe, uh, everything that it led to and not lead to. And stuff that this universe did wrong that need to be right for James Gunn's DCU. That's, that will officially begin next year with Creature Commandos as an anime series for, for Max. And then the big one in 2025, Superman Legacy. Uh, which is also being written by James Gunn, of course. So before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and comment below. What do you think of the DCU? What is your favorite movie from the DCU? Actually, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna say what it is. So, comment your guesses for what do you think my favorite DCU film is. So, let's begin. It's the early 2010. So uh, DC is kind of in a. Mm, in that sort of situation with where they don't have much stuff coming out besides animated films and their all their uh, live action film department is currently down because of the uh, critical failure of uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, Green Lantern film uh, which also led to Green Lantern not being adapted into live action for decades because I think the next time we're going to get a Green Lantern live action is in Superman Legacy with Nathan Fillion playing Guy Gardner so yeah so at that time, DC was really down in sort of in the aspect of live action films. It was more focused on animated stuff and uh, TV shows. Um, TV, yeah, TV shows kind of. They recently just ended Smallville, and um, they were doing Krypton, I think. And the in the CW shows thing was also happening at the time, I think, uh, with Arrow being the first one from speaking in the Arrowverse. So um, DC's major big big major idea was to start a whole new cinematic universe uh, with a with the first film being Superman or more specifically Man of Steel so they chose the director Zack Snyder which also directed uh, another comic book movie called Watchmen which is one of the, one of the best um, uh, see comic book films and uh, and comics out there really loved by fans so um, of course they would choose Zack Snyder to you know make their first film and um, I don't remember how old I was. I think I was, I was like six years old. So I really did not have much much consciousness back then. But before I actually started watching the whole DCU, I started seeing these old photos of Henry Cavill as Superman. And one of the things that really stood out to me and to a lot of fans on the internet was how muted the colors were in those first photos uh, from the Superman suit being with uh, a dark blue, yellow, and red from the scenarios being uh, really you know, toned down, and which is something I really don't want to see in, Zach in James Gunn's Superman Legacy. I want the colors to be vivid, alive, and uh, to, me, to Metropolis, I like, feel like a, like a character, maybe, kind of, like just like Gotham City is for Batman. So basically, the cities where these users inhabit being their own, you know, like, cities and everything. Really enjoyed that film when it came out. Really enjoyed, um, uh, Henry Cavill's performance as Superman really do think he's perfectly good cast but still this film was like driven by controversy after it came out because of the harsh decision to make Superman kill General Zod by the end of the film with him snapping his neck like a like a glow stick so this film although it was pretty cool I really did like this take on Superman Especially the flashback sequences, I think were really enjoyable. Um, this film was still driven by controversy, uh, just like the rest of the DCU. Seeing by the uh, controversy that was all all over, was all over Man of Steel, uh, they obviously would you know um, try to uh, set up the next big thing, which was in 2013 at a Comic Con, with which uh, the executives from DC does not really did not talk about Man of Steel much. But they did announce the sequel, Batman vs. Superman. I want you to remember my hand at your throat. I want you to remember the one man who beat you. Whoa!
with with a announcing that a whole new Batman was going to be introduced onto the DCU, and a couple of years later was revealed that Ben Affleck would portray the the Dark Knight, and this is pretty interesting. I think uh, Batman vs Superman, at least the original version, was I think the first miss from DC, um, from the DCU, um, because initially when that first when that film came out and I actually watched it at home and everything. Um, I really did not end up liking it. I found it a bit boring, and some stuff was just was not, not right. Uh, when one of the things being Jesse Eisenberg's uh, portrayal of Lex Luthor, but um, either way, uh, I really did not enjoy uh, Batman vs Superman, at least the original version. Of course, my opinion changed with uh, the extended version, the ultimate cut that was I think over three hours long. Uh, I think one of the first. Comic book films are actually was three hours longer, longer than three hours, of course. Um, but my really my opinion changed with that. But uh, talk more about the movie. I uh, really enjoyed Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman. Uh, I think it was a whole new fresh take on Batman uh, with, with with them adapting the whole um, Dark Knight Returns type of aspects with Batman going into Superman and Batman being a more bulkier, older Batman. Uh, in contrary to the others, Michael Keaton was. I mean, younger same thing with Val Kilmer and then Kristen Bale was also younger but then he ended off the trilogy uh, with retiring as Batman instead of being the whole uh, Dark Knight Returns bulkier Batman that Ben Affleck was but anyway um, um, this movie had a lot of hype going through it but one of one thing that really ruined the whole experience for everyone was that final trailer so um, that final trailer really did spoil one of the bigger um, you know, surprises, I guess, from uh, Batman vs. Superman, which was the whole um, Doomsday stuff. Uh, in the final show, we actually revealed that Doomsday was going to be in the film, and that's um, not pretty good since it was being kept as a big secret. And with Doomsday being revealed for Batman vs. Superman, of course, la- fans uh, started to get what this movie was going to be about. Not only except for Justice League, but also a Death of Superman story. Of course, with the uh, original cut being not being so critically acclaimed of course they would obviously hate the film and this would be another film driven by controversy just like a man of steel with this film also being directed by Zack snyder so yeah during that San yeah during that comic con where they announced i think batman vs superman just to reveal their own slate for the dc kind of what marvel does with their own faces thing where they you know just reveal the slates for every movie tv show that's coming out suicide squad so uh suicide squad is a mixed bag um, I find that uh, uh, the movie could have been uh, better, much better, uh, w- especially with inclusion of David Ayer as the director, um, with a release day cut still being you know one of the trends nowadays, just kind of like the Snyder cut, but for Suicide Squad. But I think this film really had a lot going for it that it did not uh, succeed in that. Um, uh, I think one of the m- big aspects was... Uh, the whole question of, of new villains with new actors. I think the biggest thing that was going for Suicide Squad when it was announced was the inclusion of a whole new Joker. And we got that in Jared Leto, uh, which did not make a good Joker. Um, I think we all we can all agree on that. that Jared Leto was really not a good Joker. But one of the th- one of the best things about this film, probably one of the only ones, was that cast. Uh, we got big stars like Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Jai Courtney, and among others to play these iconic villains from the DC mythos, with Margot Robbie being Harley Quinn, uh, Will Smith Deadshot, Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang, Katana, Rick Flagg, and just 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 have a few. But I, I still think that this film was one of the most, one of the first random ones that uh, DC was really throwing out there for their own uh, universe. Suicide Squad was a really, a really interesting film, also driven by a lot of controversy. Uh, first film in 2017, which is Wonder Woman. Now, Wonder Woman, I think, is one of the best DCU films. I think it's one of the ones that really does not have much negative reviews, besides uh, some people out there being mad that it's uh, driven by a main female character, which is just really stupid nowadays, with multiple women characters getting their own solo films. From Wonder Woman to Captain Marvel to Black Widow. Wonder Woman previously showed up in Batman vs. Superman to, f- to help Batman and Superman fight against Doomsday. And um, of course, they would bring Gal Gadot back for uh, this w- her own Wonder Woman film. 
And I think uh, what made this film succeed so much was, I think, the whole relationship and this whole kind of fish out of water type film that they chose to go with, with, with Wonder Woman kind of getting used to the world, which is mostly driven by men, uh, especially through World War II. And seeing her basically adapt to this world, I think was one of the best aspects of this film. I think Wonder Woman uh, was um, the first big major hit for DC. I don't remember how much she made on box office, but I don't think it reached a billion. I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. I've, I'm going to have to check it out later. I'm probably going to put this uh, over here. Yeah. Yeah. Wh whatever that made in the box office. But still, really enjoyed this film. Really. Uh, w and I think this film really did open up the people's eyes uh, and got them hyped for the Justice League film that will come later down the year. So let's talk about it. So um, Justice League, or mostly known as Justice League. What, you got a problem? No, there's no problem. <laughs> Better not be. Kalel, no. I believe in truth. But I'm also a big fan of justice. Case. What the hell is even that? Um, uh, was a film that was supposed to be the conclusion of the whole Zack Snyder trilogy from uh, Man of Steel to Batman vs. Superman to now Justice League. And um, Zack Snyder went through a lot during production of that film, so they had to change the director to Joss Whedon, who directed Avengers. And I think that I don't think that was a good move from DC. Obviously, they had, they had a good idea because he directed the first two Avengers films which was both uh, successful as hell. Jocelyn was probably leaning more onto the campy side and a more sexual side of things, which with a lot of uh, weird jokes. Uh. Steppenwolf was a really weak villain. I, he had a good motive, but still it was not expanded because of how much was cut from this film. Uh, a lot was cut from this film, actually. The year is 2018. Um, pretty much no uh, film until December with Aquaman. And Aquaman was one of the characters that, when I went to watch the Justice League in theaters, I really did not end up liking this whole take of Justin Momoa as Aquaman. Um, I always saw Aquaman as this sort of a person that was passionate for, um, for his people, for Atlantis. Uh, but from uh, from uh, the Justice League film, he really did not give off that impression. He always gave the impression that he was, um, uh, you know, he really did not want to accept his people, did not want to protect them, and everything always felt more like a party do, which, which just really wanted to get drunk and everything. With the Aquaman film, uh, which was the first film from this year that reached a billion dollars in the box office, yeah, this film really just... Um, fixed most of the stuff I wanted to see with Aquaman. Aquaman was still at the start, you know, a person that was not accepted by Atlantis because of his uh, hybrid uh, blood. From that ending f scene where Aquaman finally got his suit, stride and everything, and he was there to protect Atlantis from Ocean Master, his half-brother. That was the Aquaman I actually wanted to see in the big screen, uh, but too bad that was just for a little while. Uh, just for this film because later on he will uh, continue to get onto that drunk person who does not want to protect Atlantis at all. But still, really love this film. Uh, really, uh, I love to check it, check it out a co every couple of times. Bradley Coulson was great as Ocean Master and let's not forget Yaya Abdul-Mateen II as Black Manta, of course. So the year is 2019 where we got, we got Shazam. Uh, this whole story of a kid who, once he says the master request Shazam, he basically turns on to an, an adult and has all these amazing superpowers. And this Shazam film, I think, was made way too early onto the universe, especially if, if they, this universe did succeed. I think the movie should have been made you know, uh, a couple years down the road instead of you know being at the start. A kid turning on to a big superhero, pretty much being everyone's dream as a kid. Um, was portrayed pretty well onto the uh, onto the big screen. But well, one thing I have, uh, one thing I have against the film, not against it, 
But still, one of the things that I really did not enjoy was how much Billy, the main character, changed once he was Billy um, and when he was Shazam. So basically, when he is Billy, he's this serious kid who just wants to live a normal life, not being foster homes that for people who don't accept him. And once he becomes Shazam, I guess he feels more free, I guess. I don't know. But he just starts acting in a really childish way. But overall, pretty enjoyable film. Pretty funny film, actually. I really actually love the villain, Dr. Savannah. Uh, but that's pretty sad because in the they were teasing into uh, Dr. Savannah and that worm thing to pretty much be a main villain in the second Shazam film. But that never happened, so 2020, the only film that came out in 2020, Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, which is a really nice title, and I don't know why they chose it. I actually have no idea. Seeing from the best aspects from Suicide Squad, of course DC would use Margot Robbie's brilliant Harley Quinn uh, no, portrayal, and of course we'd use that in other films to hopefully gain uh, money, of course, and you know, possibly expand with her as Harley Quinn in the future so uh, they will make a Birds of Prey film which will be inspired from the comics where uh, Harley Quinn would team up with other Batman related characters and then um, no, fight crime and everything and this one I think is one of the most underrated uh, DC films Sandy DC of course one of the most underrated ones I uh, really like the inclusion of all the Batman and Green Arrow characters from uh, Huntress to Renee Montoya to Cassandra Cain and to uh, uh, Black Canary, which I hope Black Canary comes out, comes back in the DCU. I think we're probably getting Green Arrow pretty soon. I think it's pretty much confirmed that. But I really do want the same actress uh, that portrayed Diana Lance to come back for the DCU to play Black Canary once again. This film really just did not make up the, as much money as they wanted because of the of COVID. It was pretty much the beginning of it. Really enjoyed this film for what it was. Uh, really underrated one. Really love the villain of it, Black Mask, but still pretty sad that they killed him off just like that. Especially with uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, pro uh, portraying him. So that's not pretty cool. Uh, especially how they killed him, of course. So, next year, 2021, um, we got uh, two films in that year, I think. No. Oh, yeah, I forgot Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman came out uh, in 2020. Uh, just in Christmas of 2020 and it was I think an HBO Max uh, theater you know like collab thing where the movies came out both on HBO Max and in theaters and I gotta say this one was really a downgrade from the first film and by miles um, uh, I think the whole Steve Trevor thing uh, with uh, how they explained him coming back was pretty weird with him basically being inhabiting a body of a random dude that's pretty odd, and I think Cheetah was really misused. Uh, Pedro Pascal as Max Lore. Uh, obviously, I love Pedro Pascal, one of my favorite actors nowadays, but I think he was pretty uh, underused in this film. Uh, could have done a lot more for the character. Really a downgrade from this one. Weird shots and everything, real, weird story elements, but yeah, really did not enjoy this film, uh, which was a lot better. I think it could have lived up to the first one if not it maybe would have been better if they wanted to but yeah so the year is 2021 we got three films in that the first one was the big one Zack Snyder Justice League and I gotta say this film was I think a masterpiece um sure the four hours runtime was a bit huge but I watched it all the way through love this film love that film loved it a lot um, it was cool to see how much of the film was actually deleted from ju from the Justice League, uh, with the whole with basically Cyborg being pretty much the main character of this film, with a lot of just of Justice League going to Cyborg. Um, the whole build up to Dark Side was also something huge that was for some freaking reason removed from the ju from Justice League, because I think if they had the, made this film right. But still, had found out a way to lead it all to dark side in the end. I think this film would have that that film would have been much better than it was Justice League. But Zack Snyder Justice League, the definitive Justice League, of course, was so much better with the whole world building and everything, with the inclusion of other characters such as Martian Manhunter. Um, 
with a very, pretty big twist that he was actually in the beginning of the DCU all along. He was the general that arrested Superman and Man of Steel. But yeah, we got a lot of development towards other characters from Flash to Cyborg to Aquaman. And yeah, this one was just awesome. Uh, much better than the first one, of course. A lot more development for the characters. And I actually want to want to rewatch it now so thank you youtube thank you let's go on to the next one which is the suicide squad so dc once again shows one of those random films and it's actually a sequel sequel to to the first suicide squad and they obviously needed a big name to direct it so they chose the director of the, both guardian films so he was hired by dc to make the suicide squad which is one of the best films from the dcu from the stylistic choices to the score to the characters and everything um and i think james gunn really just have a good vision of what makes superhero films so special and i'm happy he's, be he's the one you know being a, a you know like he's the one he's like the one above all in terms of dc him and peter saffron i'm so glad he's being is the one on the creative side of things we're choosing the films that that are happening, TV shows and everything, and I'm happy he's the one directing the first uh, Superman film, Superman Legacy, and I think, um, yeah, I think the secrecy that was around this film was something really uh, cool that we hadn't seen before in a film, especially with the whole um, bloodshot casting from Idris Elba, was kept a huge mystery until DC Phantom that year, was when it was revealed that it was he would be playing Bloodsport in the film, and I think the inclusion of new characters for this film, such as King Shark, um, uh, Rat Casher 2, Portuguese representation. Thank you very much, James Gunn. I love you. Muchas gracias, aficion. Este para vosotros. And yeah, Sarah Sampaio is also playing a character in Superman Legacy. She's also a Portuguese actress. So thank you, James Gunn, for Portuguese representation. And if you ever need uh, Duke Thomas for the DCU, in the films, whether it is Brave and the Bold or something else, I'm always here. I'm a show Portuguese, so yeah. So I think uh, James Gunn really has a, a lot of creativity. He has a wide mind of what these characters uh, could be in the whole potential. Um, and that really helped up a lot of characters such as um, Rick Flagg, which is one of the worst characters in the first Suicide Squad film which was greatly improved in the Suicide Squad, but he did da die uh, from Peacemaker. And Peacemaker was also one of the best uh, characters in that film, one of my favorites. Really enjoyed it, one of my favorites, definitely. And I actually want to rewatch the whole DCU now, so yeah. So next one, uh, which was, what's the next one? Ah, Black Adam. The year is 2007. And we got the official announcement that a Black Adam film would be in the works with The Rock set to star as Black Adam. And after 14 years, it finally came out uh, with the same title as Black Adam. And I think this, all, this one is also a mixed bag for me. Um, I think this film could have been a lot better if they had, if they had stuck to the more smaller grounds of Black Adam. I think The Rock and... Pretty much, yeah, pretty much just The Rock was heading towards, you know, a skipping over Shazam to, you know, for a Shazam versus Black Adam fight. And he wanted to get onto the big guns uh, quickly, onto Superman, with them fit, making the biggest announcement of all time with Henry Cavill coming back as Superman for the DCU, which was obviously false. Hey everyone, I wanted to wait until the weekend was over before posting this. Uh because I wanted to give you all a chance to watch Black Adam. But now that plenty of you have, I wanted to make it official that I am back as Superman. And the image you see on this post and what you saw in Black Adam are just a very small taste of things to come. So uh, there's a lot to be thankful for, and I'll get to that in time. But I want to thank you guys most of all Thank you for your support and thank you for your patience. I promise it will be rewarded. I think Black Adam w was a pretty fun film, but I think it was pretty much... I think if this film w was released back in 2007, I think it would have been a hit. Um, 
because I think this film is a good superhero film, but I think it's just, um, you know, it has, you know, like old superhero films in its veins, basically. So, um, and then I say that the stylistic choice for action scenes and everything are something, we, some some stuff we see in older superhero films, especially from the, from the 2000s. So, I think that was really, you know, uh, got the movie done for me. But I think the inclusion of the Justice Society of America was, I think, the best aspect of it. All, all pretty much were perfectly cast. Uh, with my favorite one being, of course, Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. And then Alden Hodge as Hawk, uh, Hawkman, of course. And hopefully see the, them both in the DCU. I think Sabak was... Uh, I think I liked how it was built up, but I think the execution was executed poorly onto the film. Uh, I think Sabak was a really, just a weak villain that was there just to uh, compliment a funny joke from a film, from a catchphrase joke. So, yeah. The year is our recent year, 2023, uh, and uh, we got a plethora of DC films, and I'm just going to like speed run through them, uh, say what I, I think I thought about them. So, uh, here we go. Shazam! Fear of the Gods. Also a downgrade from the first one. I think this one would have been better if they had built up um, Black Adam fighting Shazam instead of already going to Superman. I think this film would have also been better if they had, Instead of Black Adam, they would have continued the, the storyline from the first film with Dr. Savannah and the worth and the worm thing being the main villains instead of this whole three goddesses, which really came out of nowhere. The Flash. Now, this one, I think uh, I really enjoyed this film, but this was also driven by controversy because of Ezra Miller, their whole criminal thing that, that they've been on. But they're now doing rehab and everything, so I don't think they're, uh, I don't think they're coming back for the DCU. But still... Um, Really enjoyed this film. Some questionable VFX shots, but still, really enjoyed this one. Uh, really like it. So, uh, yeah, let's go to the next one. The Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was definitely my favorite DC film this year by miles. Um, I think Jean Marie Lena did a great job as Jaime Reyes. And I think this film really, um, uh, you know, I, I'm glad I'm. F- Sad that it, that it flopped in the box office, uh, pretty much has made uh, its budget, uh, no, not even break even, but still, um, this film uh, was a ton of fun. I uh, love all the, the the Latino culture representation that was involved in it. That was pretty big for uh, you know like Latino fans, but still, uh, the villain was a bit weak, and I mean that for both. And of course, the the end one. The death of the DCU, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This film, I think, it was not as bad as people say. I love Black Man in it, but still, it does fall into the same problem of his movie as Aquaman, where this film just really implemented that this character does not give a crap about Atlantis. This pretty much just wants you know to leave, live peacefully, I guess, but it does not want to serve his response and responsibilities, and I think. Orm was pretty much the Aquaman I wanted all, all along. He's passionate for Atlantis. He wants to protect his people. And that's something Aquaman is not in this film for some reason. In this universe, more specifically. But still, not a bad film. Uh, love Black Manta in it. Uh, this movie was also driven by controversy with the whole Amber Heard thing. Uh, but, yeah. I also forgot to talk about Peacemaker. Which is the only series about this one, about this universe. Well, this universe now, Peacemaker was actually pretty great, uh, which is, makes me just more hopeful that Superman Legacy and the whole Jimmy and DCU thing uh, succeeds and it's great. Uh, since just seeing how Suicide Squad and um, Peacemaker th- turned out, Peacemaker was one of the characters I really did not like in the Suicide Squad, but I think Peacemaker, the series, really just delved on to the more emotional side of him showing more of his family uh, especially his father uh, by robert patrick um seeing the type of childhood he went through just become you know the assassin we know today and see, pretty much seeing how he is with people which is was really something we saw in suicide squad with the rest of the, the crew being pretty much just his colleagues his mates so that was it my pretty much my tribute to the ecu DCEU, and 
I gotta say, this universe went through a lot of ups and downs, a lot more downs than ups, but still, um, I think uh, having a whole a whole fleshed out DC universe, I think is something that's what we need, especially with computer Marvel, um, but still, uh, love a couple of movies, made out a couple of them, but still in the end, it's not as bad as people say, and um, I will officially say that my favorite DCEU film is James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Uh, really enjoyed that film. Love the sound of his choices and everything. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, hopefully, James Gunn su uh, succeeds in this whole DCU thing or otherwise. In 10 years, we're probably going to come back here just to do another one of these videos. Hopefully, not because you. Uh, this video is already 40 minutes long, at least of, from when I'm recording it, so, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and comment down below what is your favorite DCU film, and just give your, your opinion on the DCU. So, I'm Janil. Peace out. Take care.